Guys, welcome to 100 Hours, 100 Stars. The idea is to make you meet 100 stars from various spheres of life, people who have really inspired me. And we're all uh, doing this so that we can contribute to the PM Cares Fund. That's the Prime Minister Cares Fund. And you'll see a QR code on the screen along with a link. You could either scan the QR code or click on the link and fill in how much you want to donate and hit uh, proceed to contribute. One of my favorite people, Kirti Kulhari, is here. What's up, yo? How are you? What's up, yo? I'm very good, Rishike. You're one of my favorite people too. I like talking to my favorite people. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> to, to me, all these years that I've known you, there are two facets to you. One is, of course, the moment the camera comes on, whatever the part is, whether it's vivacious or serious, you just switched on. And the other is whenever I met you, I found a certain amount of stillness to you. And people I find who have a little stillness or some stillness in their lives during this lockdown have taken to it like fish to water. No disrespect to what's happening outside. It's really horrible. But how are you coping with this? Um, I think um, I'm absolutely uh, comfortable, you know, being at home and uh, not doing what I generally do in life. And uh, I'm anyway a very home person. Like I do not like socializing beyond my what my work requires me to do. So I love being at home by myself. And uh, yeah, except for some moments when I, you know, when the mind starts telling you, oh my God, there's nothing happening. What's going on? What's happening in the world? And why aren't you working? You should be doing this. You should be doing that. Except for those little moments here and there, I think I'm mostly uh, uh, very happy uh, getting closer to myself, just uh, spending time uh, with myself, just, um, you know, just, just, uh, it's a very spiritual word, but I would like to use here just being, you know, not, not, of course I'm doing everything. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, at home with my parents and all of that, but just, um, I think it's a great time, um, uh, to use, uh, for introspection to, to, to use, uh, you know, uh, it's a, it's great time for using it to, uh, confront everything that you've been avoiding for a while now, you know, and, and knowing that that's the only way to, um, you know, to go beyond is to go through, through it. Like you cannot do this any longer. And I think, uh, to really take the time out to rest it out physically, mentally, emotionally, heal yourself in areas again, that you, you probably are not aware that you need healing or if you are, then maybe you're not doing the work, the required work. And really to use this time to just, uh, reflect on your own life on on your own conditioning your own mindsets and how your own attitude towards everything and um, just prepare yourself that when this ends there's really a new you that approaches the world you know in a new way so yeah that's that's what I'm doing sitting here at home you know I was just thinking before we started the interview I said you know I, I've been interviewing her from, you know, the Shaitan Jal days very early on in her career. And every film there is, or every release, now that there's also been a couple of seasons of former shots, uh, there's always an interview. And what is it that I, I've, I haven't asked uh, Keithi? And I went, I said, my God, how is it that I've never talked to her about her singing? And I remember uh, uh, years ago when Mikey McCleary was working on Bartender, I used to be in and out of his studios uh, because I also do voiceovers and he makes jingles and things like that. I remember him telling me, you know, Kirti Kulhari sings really, really well. And now I look at your, uh, your Insta feed and I see these wonderful nuggets of you singing. And I'm like, man, I can't believe I've never asked her about this. So music in your life, are you trained in the past or now? Uh, are you like a karaoke singer like I am? Are you still working at it? Uh, give us the spiel on that. Well, um, singing for me is one thing which is which uh, is at par f with acting for me. You know, like if I can't choose between act what acting does to me and what singing does to me, of course, because I because I have more experience in acting and I've learned more of uh, consciously. I'm I'm you know I'm better at acting than singing. But um, I think singing is is one of my first loves. I mean, it happened to me um, like when I was a child and we my dad got transferred to Shaka Patnam and in our building we had this Bengali auntie who would uh, Bengalis have you know most of the a uh, lot of uh, teachers music teachers are Bengali and we had this Das auntie who would teach and I think me and my sister were enrolled to kind of start learning music and that was I think my first um, 
very uh, first uh, brush with singing and i remember really enjoying it but i also remember not being able to pursue it beyond a couple of months or so and uh, but i think uh, and then in between i i don't think i ever got back to it but of course i would sing in the school and here and there and uh, now like when you know like maybe for the last 10 years i have uh, when i started earning myself you know i would make sure that there's somebody coming home to teach me or you know i started going to uh, some school to learn and stuff so it's been a constant part of my life uh, but not a very regular part i have been quite inconsistent with that obviously because of my because of nature of my work and um, but now i have a teacher i go to again very rarely now and but i have a, i've had a harmonium for like for years now i have, i have an electronic tanpura so singing is something i'm very serious about it's not something i'm like chalo bathroom mein galiya ye kar liya yeah i it's it's a space that i think is very um, is very zen for me and uh, i think uh, singing also has uh, the riyas not the singing part so much but the understanding of music and the and the you know the whole riyas part has really helped me understand the whole language of surs in acting as well you know like all of these things are not separate like there is there is you know sur is a big part of acting as well and people who understand it i mean i would really advise everyone who is an actor like abroad abroad they 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 have to train you in singing you know even if you want to become whether you want to become an actor or not singing is like the first step to it you know and that has a lot of um, importance and you know people who understand it so um yeah i'm just uh, thanks to instagram i mean there are people who will not uh, you know just uh, tell me what bullshit is this you know there are people who would want to listen to me so yes i'm just like whenever i feel like i just sing something and i just put it up and uh, yeah seems to seems to be enjoyable no i love it because you bring uh, a little bit of yourself to the song i'll give you a classic example uh, when somebody asked me to sing some sp bala bala subramaniam i sound like him when somebody asked me to sing a kishore kumar song i you know i try and sound like kishore kumar but that's not the thing i i i heard you sing din shagnada which is a a jasleen royal song which is also been used in uh, former shots too but yeah. you brought your own or texture to it likewise ikkudi you brought your own texture to it and i think that's wonderful i think anybody who sings whether it's um, just out of a hobby or professionally has just got to bring some of them to the song as opposed to you know what the original or what somebody else has done i think that's lovely but you know but rishiket i think that's the whole idea because um i'll give you an example like i think i'm not capable of bring and bringing anybody else like i'll give you an example of acting as well i i just cannot imitate like you tell me kirti sound like her or you know like imitate this person that person i really suck at it so i think it's because of my lack of inability to to be like anybody else i have no choice but to just bring something of my own to you know whether it's acting or uh singing because i think and thankfully that's that's how it works people don't want to see another amitabh bachchan people don't want to see another uh, hema malini people want to see you people want to see what do you bring to the table so i think the same rule applies to any art form you know imitation is i think is is the is the death of whatever you are trying to do and i think you have to always work towards uh, just being original just being real and i think the uh, everything else will just follow i feel so what are you doing for groceries i mean do you make a run once or twice a week or does somebody deliver it downstairs to the watchman you go down bring it up and then sanitize it what are you doing for groceries and essentials during the lockdown so i am uh, with my parents right now in kharkar and uh, honestly my dad is the one who does the running around for groceries i i just step down to take my dog out for a walk in the night at around 10 pm but apart from that i really am not going anywhere my dad and mom me and my mom pretty much like stay home and uh, my dad does the running around so yeah no that's really nice because uh, if you're not with your parents uh, the senior citizens being alone is quite scary you know my parents retired from bombay and moved to bangalore and you know you just freak out at the at the thought of a 76 year old and a 72 year old on their own managing and things like that that's what they have been managing so i'm glad that you're you're with them 
And your daddy, yeah. I saw some pictures of her. How is she doing? <laughs> you managed to speak? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did a video call with her like a couple of days back because one of my cousins happened to be there and uh, they are they are amazing. Like they are absolutely fine. And uh, uh, yeah, she's, she's like a cutie pie. I mean, I saw her on the phone again and I was like, oh my God, this face, you know, with all the wrinkles and that chashma and everything. I think she's the cutest and she, uh, they're doing very well, thankfully. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think they felt good uh, seeing me and I felt the same. So yeah, they're doing well. So uh, do you have a domestic help at home who's helping with the cooking or is it mom and you and yeah. dad who are taking some turns yeah. in Khargar there? Yeah. No, we don't have any domestic help. We had a maid who would come in and go, but right now we don't. Uh, so my mom is has always been a housewife and she is a workaholic. Like most of the moms who have been housewives, she is OCD about, you know, putting everything in order, which, which during these times really helped. Because even if you don't want to do some work, she is at it. So yes, we try and offer our helps. But most of the times we are like just shunned away (laughs) because we are not good enough for her. Our quality of work is never good enough for my mother. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, of course we are helping her with things here and there, but um, yeah, there's no, there's no domestic help for cooking or cleaning here. You know, I'm asking a question to some of the people I'm speaking to about, any new skill that has been acquired. And it's surprising what, what comes up. I mean, I spoke to the CEO of Book My Show, Ashish Hemrajani, and he says, uh, I, may, I, ba- I make bread now. I actually bake different kind of, kinds of bread every day. I spoke to Nikhil Chinappa and he said, uh, I'm learning to tell stories to my two and a half year old. So a story of a hippopotamus, a story of a rhino. <laughs> Dabur Rutlani said, I'm using this time to back up all my old photos. You know, the physical photos. I'm trying to digitize them and put them on a hard drive. Um, yeah. Uh, is there a skill or something that you've worked on in these last few days since the lockdown started? Something? Uh, um, I don't know if any skill per se, but I have um, I've gotten back to cooking. Like I'm not somebody who's very um, who's very uh, who really enjoys cooking all the time because I think with our schedules it becomes like like a thing, you know. Keep uh, Cooking is not something I is my first choice when I come home and whatever. But I think now we are getting time to do that. So I'm kind of cooking a lot more than I usually do. And um, I've uh, gotten back to reading. I think I had uh, reading had reading had just become like a, you know, a thing of the past with all this Netflix and Amazon and all these, you know, OTT platforms coming in. I mean, uh, so I think I've, I've gotten back to that. And I have gotten back to writing my diary. That's something oh. I'm doing uh, almost every day because, um, as I said, I'm spending, you know, that whole thing of just being with yourself, things coming to you and you just want to pen them down. And I used to be a, you know, I used to really enjoy writing my diaries and everything and all of that much earlier. But that's one thing that I think I've gotten back to. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So what's the what's the last good dish you cooked and the last good book you read? Uh, well, I'm still reading uh, the two books that I'm almost finishing. Uh, one is uh, Close to the Bone, Lisa Ray's uh, autobiography. And uh, there's one called A Thousand Seeds of Joy, which is uh, teachings of uh, Ma Lakshmi and Ma Saraswati. So uh, very, very different books from each other, but you know, like very nice books, both of them. And you read them simultaneously. And you read them simultaneously. I read like three to four books simultaneously. Because I'm like, Acha, abhi, abhi mein kis mood mein hu? You know, spiritual mood mein hu? Acha, jo, let's pick this up. Ab mein is mein hu. So I, I have a thing of, you know, ki matlab, I should have options available. And uh, cooking, um, uh, I think uh, the most recent thing I cooked was pongal. Yesterday oh. for lunch, I made some pongal. Yeah, <laughs> I personally love pongal. It's like soul food for me. And it's the quickest thing to make. And um, my parents have kind of taken to it. So my mom is like, Are, tumhara wala wo bana lo na, wo bana lo. You know, whenever we <laughs> cook something else. So yesterday afternoon, I cooked some pongal. Yes. Yeah. When you say that to a, a Tambram, a Tamil, he feels very, very happy that we have infiltrated into the north with our cuisine. <laughs> I know. I know. Apart from Italy, like, <laughs> huh? 
Apart from Italy, though, apart from Italy, apart from Italy, though, sir. I don't think Tanbrand now even care about Italy, though, sir. That's like, हो गया. वो तो हम कर चुके हैं. We have like, हम हम पूरे world पे, you know, वो कर चुके हैं. Now what's next? What's next in this? Pongal it is. <laughs> Let's come to uh, to Anj to Anjana, your character in former shots, please. Did you see season two? Every every inch, every second of it, and. <laughs> uh to me it's it's interesting because here she is uh, we know that neel's character and her character are over but she's grappling with the other woman in neel's life and you know suddenly there's a lot of chaos that breaks loose because uh, the intern happens and then uh, an extramarital affair happens but through it all uh you sympathize with her because you know that uh, in a, in a, in, a, in a lot of ways she didn't approach the extramarital affair out of deceit but she felt that this was happening uh with the razamandi of everybody around them and that pretty much describes what anjana is all about i mean the lawyer brain who's going through all these things in her relationships talk to me about her please well um you know first of all rishiki like as an actor I really, um, I don't want to play it safe anymore. You know, I don't want to play the good girl. I don't want to play the one who does everything right, the one who is independent and strong, and all of that. I mean, of course, I've been doing that for a while and in different forms and all of that. But I think um, people, every time people start seeing you a certain way, you know, and it's it's obviously to do with. how the see you on screen and then this they start believing that you are this person i want to keep breaking that for people you know so while you spoke about anjana and yes there is a part of anjana which has justified uh, all of this saying you know i didn't cheat anybody i was you know honest about the whole thing but having said that i am saying even if even if she was somebody uh, even if she went into it knowing what it was you know there's there's something that shashank's character tells her at the end of the season when he says even if if you had known that this is not an open marriage you would you have been able to stop yourself you know would you have not done it and that's a question to really ponder upon because um you know my idea as an actor is to uh while while it's great to have everybody's empathy you know as a character and be like people you know justifying your uh, what you did why you did it and being with you on your journey i think it's um i feel the whole point is to show that even if someone does it uh, even if someone has an extramarital affair knowing that uh, knowing everything you know and they choose to go into it my my job as an actor is to is to show you the other side you know not to get your sympathy not to not for you to empathize with me but just to show you that listen uh, things happen you know a lot of things happen with a lot of people and uh, i can say this with authority because you know i also know about things that happen with people but again as an actor i can say this with more authority that because i have because i've been in people's shoes you know i have mm-hmm. seen the world from their perspective so uh yes anjana for me and i don't see anjana as someone who sorted you know yes there is a part of her that sorted she is she seems very sorted in her professional life and it happens to a lot of us you know sure. we have this one side to us which is like you know which which is very sorted mature you know what you're doing you're you're very much in control and then you have the other side where you yourself wonder sometimes that why would i do this like why did i put myself in this situation so for me anjana that's what makes me makes a character interesting for me and i think that's what i would like to always work on as an actor to show you different sides of a character to not i mean one thing i really run away from is one dimensional characters ye aisi hai aisi hi rahegi you know you have established her and she is like that's what you see for the rest of the film or rest of the season and that's very boring for me that's very very boring for me so my idea would be to show you as many sides to 
a particular character and to make her as human as possible you know and not make a woman out of her not make a diva out of her uh, so that's so for me it's okay if anjana did this and anjana did that and anjana did that because that's what happens yeah. there is so much that happens with all of us and we we always can't make sense of it at maybe at some point we are able to maybe at, maybe we are not able to you know and it's it's all okay so we are just showing you journeys of these characters you can take what you like you can learn what you like from it you can you know you can discard it you can you can criticize it you can do whatever with it but this is our job as an actor to show you everything you know so yeah you know uh... I can't believe that this is the same Nupur Astana who made Hippie Pure. <laughs> we grew up on that show. How cool is that? Where was she for all these years? But anyway, the unique stuff that Nupur brought onto the table. I mean, because uh, I, I felt season one was very risque. This is more about the relationships than the the risque content. So, what what is it that you thought was was unique as to what Nupur brought onto the table? uh so i think uh, we as a team also learned our a lot from season 1 we we of course uh you know contemplated on what what worked what didn't work and you know we worked on every in every department we worked on everything and i think what um so one thing that see one thing that worked for season 1 season 2 is the fact that we didn't have to introduce the characters to you we didn't have to you know um make you like them again like you had already you were you were um you were well versed with these characters so that part was over and you could just straight away jump into you know the the second season with them on a, on a fresh journey and i think um one what i really like is um see the show had to have a certain pace you know the kind of show it is the the vibe that the show has of course there's drama and there's love and there is you know everything going on a lot of drama you know in terms of conflicts also going on in the show but i think the the pace of the show is something that it's it has to be a very fine balance between um, you know that tehrav that we talk about yeah. of of you connecting with the emotions of different characters in different scenes plus uh it just moving you know it just like so i think second season that's what i think that that balance has been more or less created by by nupur the the uh the show is is much more fluid this time you know it just like the the transition from one scene to another from one thing to another just happens uh, much more fluidly and smoothly as compared to second season so the, you know editor has done a wonderful job uh, um and also nupur herself is a is a very uh, she's an editor director you know so when she comes on set she knows her cuts you know it's not something she figures out when she's mm-hmm. on edit i mean of course it's something that you also thoda bahut yahan wahan hota hai but she pretty much knows the cut the edit of the scene so that's how she approaches and um, i think it's it's shot much better the the show looks much nicer you know and uh, the production value has really gone up this time and you can and not just about budgets bad gaye it's not of course it matters but also the show has opened up the show has uh, explored um different things it has op- it has explored different relationships you know it has explored um, south bombay again in a very in a, in a very interesting way so i think all of this put together and um, and i think the also the characters the actors who are playing the characters are i mean they know their characters now you know mm. so so when they it's it's they are much smoother on screen you know their their relationships are far more spontaneous and and organic as compared to first season so i think that's i mean ideally this should be an ideal scenario yeah that you move from one, especially for a show like um um our show you should move i mean every season should just get better than the first one so Yeah, I'm glad the second season did well. Love it. So, uh, Anjana was what was offered to you right in the beginning, or were you offered some other part, and this then this happened, or was it always Anjana well, that Anjana, was given to you to read? No, Anjana was always something that was offered to me, and uh, but in between there was a point where I uh, I was, 
you know asked to like i was given a choice of damini as well and uh, but i think by that time i had already taken to anjana because we had finished our first round of workshops you know and 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 you kind of start connecting with the character you have you know you have you start relating to the character you start um, there's an attachment that kind of you've you've fallen in love with the character already so i think it was too late for me to do damini by then but yeah uh, anjana it was and it could have been damini also maybe who who amongst the girls do you like hanging out with and having conversations with the most uh well uh, season 1 i was um uh, uh quite close to bani we kind of uh, got along more than uh, you know me getting along with anybody else and same for her and this season i have i think i've grown uh, grown uh, quite uh, quite comfortable and close to manvi we um, also took a trip together after our istanbul shoot turkey we took like a one week holiday just the two of us and we traveled and we bonded and we really had a great time so i think that i think really strengthened uh, what we shared and uh, yeah nice yeah. so you went to europe the two of you went to europe europe or no just yeah. turkey just turkey <laughs> which just had like one week and there's so much turkey is huge yaar there's so much to see in turkey only so yeah. we said abhi aur kahin nahi jayenge bas yahi yahi ghumenge <laughs> What's that one thing that you're looking forward to doing once uh, the lockdown is lifted, whenever it happens? Is there something that you're yearning to do? I'm, I'm looking forward to two things: uh, traveling and shooting. So yeah. And and during these days, how does it flow? Do you wake up in the morning and just go with the flow, or do you set yourself a timetable saying this time to this time reading scripts, this time to this time interview, uh, a Zoom meeting with a producer, director? How does it work? Do you set yourself a timetable every day? during these days no i don't actually but i think it just so happened that life has kind of fallen into a timetable it's not like i you know try and uh, there are days that i'm like asha itne baje uthna hai main shayad ye karungi but i have realized it doesn't work and i and i'm like what am i doing this for this is you know this is like should be the last thing you should be doing right now like following a timetable <laughs> but yeah i think and and then in the moment i take off that pressure off me off a timetable it just falls into a timetable that's the beauty of it like <laughs> yeah. pressure pressure doesn't work for me i have realized that no kind of pressure works for me so the more i let go the more i am able to do the more disciplined i am able to be so yeah it's pretty much like i like i don't sleep for more than like 7 8 hours maybe you know it's not like i'm sleeping the whole day and you know there are maybe it's just like like i think yes day before yesterday I actually slept in the slept slept in the afternoon for the first time in the whole log. No, otherwise I would probably meditate or do some reiki or something. But I actually fell asleep, you know. And uh, so yeah, <laughs> but but I think I'm. Um, it's a great um, what do you say? A great mix of uh, being disciplined and yet, you know, having no sort of time pressure, time deadlines. you know for yourself yeah and you know in, in any case even if the phased lift off of the lockdown happens with the actors it's always going to be a, a, you have to be a little careful because you see people in the unit uh, you know lots and lots of people on a set the directors the the cinematographer the associates can all wear their masks and be there but you guys in the shot you can't do that you know so it's going to be a very measured you know structured getting back to work so i think everybody in the film industry and the television industry is kind of getting set for that long haul are you having conversations with colleagues about that yeah oh just... uh, yeah i have been um, you know because i was almost finishing something i had like 7 days of shoot pending when this lockdown started mm-hmm. and then i was supposed to start something new from the 1st of april so yes i have a bunch of things that you know that are kind of on hold and of course we are all waiting to have uh, some kind of clarity on what's going on and when is it going to be lifted but um i mean i would like to say that there is clarity but actually there is no clarity i don't think anybody really has a clue of when it's going to be lifted first of all and secondly how like as you rightly said i mean in our profession you have like anywhere between 75 to 150 200 people working together and how do you kind of you know and it's it's all about social distancing how do you kind of maintain that in a in a in, in an environment like ours so that is a big challenge but um 
so yeah i think everyone still figuring it out rishikesh and and uh, honestly like personally speaking um i'll do everything that needs to be done to kind of do my bit you know maintain yeah. whatever distancing and you know be you know wear the mask and all of this there's that whatever but i think one thing that one thing that i don't do and one thing that i will not do is be like be fearful of it be like mm. you know panic about this whole thing because because really like you can do your best and you could just slip in your bathroom and you could be gone so i exactly you know so for me it's just like i know there is uh, we all think you know we can control this and we can do what of course we can do what we can do but really like i don't think the only way to uh, approach this is with calmness and just doing your best and being ready for the worst that's the that's the funda so yeah okay guys just a final <laughs> reminder there there is a qr code and a link on the video the idea is to reach out to our covid-19 warriors so scan the qr code click on the link and fill in all the payment details the amount you want to donate and say proceed to contribute it goes straight to the pm cares fund that's the prime minister cares fund and uh, just do your bit uh, for society listen i wish you lots of reiki lots of meditation lots of good pongal <laughs> and much much <laughs> better hugs <laughs> that i'm going to eat a lot of it's the easiest thing to make <laughs> <laughs> thank you kirti kulari thank you darling take thank care thank you so much rishi you take care of yourself bye presenting fever network the power of 3 number one station in delhi mumbai Bangalore and Kolkata Fever Fever FM the bomb of Bollywood Congratulations to all of you for being the number one radio station. The biggest CSR initiative on radio. Pioneers of radio drama in the industry. Sports tie-ups. Official radio partners of five winning IPL teams. Most entertaining shows and arches. India's coolest retro station 107.2 Radio Nasha 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 Gana Gana Sha Gungu Nana Gana Sha Sunne Gana Sha Suna 
Celeb Archives. Best of Retro. Shows and arches that take you back in time. Radio One, India's only international network. The only radio station Katy Perry vibed with. We were there when you two performed for the first time in India. Global teen sensation Justin Bieber jams with Radio One. Truly global shows and RGs. Mega Mix, America's Top 40, The Mahindra Blues Show and more. Hundred stars. So this is a very, very exciting initiative that's been brought to you by HD Media. This is a tribute to all of the COVID-19 warriors are working out there for us day in and day out. It's a sort of fundraiser. So you know that you can check out the QR code that is below the bottom of the screen and you can click on it and uh, donate and make your donations towards all of those wonderful warriors who are fighting it out there for us. And today joining me on 100 Hours 100 Stars is one of India's veteran cricketers. Hi, Dinesh Karthik. How are you doing? Very, very good. Uh, thank you so much for bringing me on the show. It's an absolute honor and uh, I think these are testing times and this is the least I could do. So thank you so much for having me. It's my absolute pleasure and I think every single person from Tamil Nadu, especially every single person from Chennai is so, so excited to see you on the screen. Even though we're not able to see you on the field, we're missing all of the action, but we're so excited that we're able to have you here with us. So first up, a big thank you for accepting my, you know, request and being a part of this initiative. Thank you so much. So how is it going for you? How is the family? How is everything? I think we're very lucky. I think, uh, you know, God has been really kind to us. Uh, we have a roof, we have some food, so that's all anyone could ask for. So, uh, you know, we are, uh, we are one of the few fortunate ones. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who are struggling a lot more to just put meals on the plate. And, uh, you know, for us to have the comforts of the house and uh, have some food is, uh, is more than what we could ask for in this situation. So, yes, to answer that question, uh, everybody is fine in the family. So, um, everything is good. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to hear that. So obviously, I have a lot of questions that I've written down that I want to ask you at this point. So we'll try and keep this as fun and entertaining for our viewers as well. So obviously, I know that you're very, very active on Twitter, okay? I see that you're day in, day out, answering a lot of questions from the fans and everything. And something that really struck my eye was the potato and paneer recipe that you tried out. You were doing a little bit of cooking, is it? How is that going for you? So yeah, Isa Gua, who's a, who's a cricket commentator, she lives in UK and um, her mom has a cookbook uh, full of recipes, Bengali dishes. And uh, it was an initiative for to raise funds for what they call in UK the NHS, National Health Scheme. So, you know, uh, you know she brought on uh, celebrities on, on, on air and, uh, you know, made them cook a dish that her mom, is, uh, that her mom had, uh, you know, put down right. the recipe book and we tried it. Uh, it came out very well. It was a very tasty dish. And... Uh, you know, all the people who end up buying that book, the funds would go to uh, the NHS. So it was just a novel initiative. Uh, and uh, as I said, again, I was very ha happy to be part of that as well. Very nice. So is Dinesh Karthik a more adventurous eater or someone who likes to actually be in the kitchen and cook? Oh, definitely a more adventurous eater. Uh, I honestly haven't done much cooking. In fact, I, I can proudly say that was the first dish I ever cooked with the help of Dipika. So, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, it was the first time I stepped into the kitchen to cook something. Very, very nice. So, how is it going otherwise? I know that you're keeping yourself quite occupied. So, obviously, I have this question to ask you. For all of us, you know, uh, pre and post this quarantine period, the lockdown and all of that, there's been a major change or a sort of shift in the routine, our everyday lifestyle, right? So, what has it sort of been like for you? Because as a cricketer, you obviously need to keep yourself very fit, lots of exercising and things like that, right? So, what did you sort of do to, you know, accept this situation and uh, adapt? 
you know, um, first thing is, uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, a couple of things that I could do, which, uh, which is very hard to do during the season, which is A, uh, sleeping in a little later. So, you know, I get up around 8.30, 9.00, sometimes 9.30. So, that is something very novel for us because as cricketers, we tend to get up early. You know, we, uh, we work out or we do something or the other. So, right. especially in Chennai, because the, the sun can really get to you uh, during the day. So, we try and do everything before 8.30 and then probably do everything after about 3.30. So, um, you know, this gives us a chance to sleep in knowing that we have no practice to go to, no match to play. So, you know, so um, I've been doing things which, uh, which I haven't done uh, for, for far too long. So, uh, you know, just sleeping in. Uh, trying to uh, do uh, whatever I can with my body weight uh, within the house or, you know, luckily in our apartment, which is a small apartment, uh, we have a small gym downstairs so, and not many people use it. So I've been lucky enough to use it generally. Otherwise, you know, I tend to go to a gym which is slightly uh, further away from my house. So, um, you know, those kind of things which, uh, which can be, um, which are things which I haven't done too much in the, in the recent past. Uh, I've been able to do all of that now. Very, very nice. So what is it that you sort of learned during, uh, because I know these are very trying and testing times and I know that you also mentioned in the beginning of the interview itself that we're very fortunate to be in this position, right? So if there's some sort of a lesson or a positive message that you would like to share with our listeners at this point. See, I think, uh, you know, one of the most positive things that I'm seeing is, you know, always... um, The world has uh, always fought for various different reasons. You know, different countries fighting for different things. They want different cities, different states fighting for different things. Now, because of whatever has happened due to this COVID-19, the whole world has come together just to fight off one evil, so to say. So, you know, that is something that is very novel, very special. And uh, we all stand in solidarity to trying and uh, and doing our bit to make sure this world is a better place. I think... uh, now, this is a massive uh, wake-up call uh, for all of us to know that uh, it's a massive cycle and everybody is involved in it and everybody needs help of each other. And uh, just the fact that we're all able to stay together, you know, be together, do things, the smallest of things that we do in our lives could affect somebody else. So you know, that's come as a massive revelation to all of us. How the, how the things that we take for granted is, uh, are things that we should be careful about at times and, you know, um, think about humanity as such and make sure we do, we do things that uh, impact others. Absolutely. I think that was very rightly put. And uh, definitely the entire world is coming together and fighting as the human race to make sure that we come out of this, you know, with better hopes and uh, hopes for a better future itself. I think sort of that summarizes the thing. Very, very nice, DK. We've got a couple of questions that we've actually been asked by listeners when we know when we knew that, you know, you were going to be a part of this. So obviously you had a very interesting Instagram live with the Pandya brothers recently. I saw that as well. And I know that you're very active on social media, even otherwise, right? How much do you love social media? How much do you think it is not really helpful? What's your opinion? You know, I think uh, social media is something that um, is, a, is a great place to be. A lot of positives can be learned from it. And uh, it's like anything else in life. Uh, I think you need to figure out what the positives are and what the negatives are. Try and stay away from the negatives. Obviously, there'll be probably a lot of trolling, a lot of hatred. But that's also right. a place uh, where you can learn a lot of things. Um, and I use social media according to uh, two things. One, how, how, the, how the fans react to what, whatever I put out on the media. And a lot of the times I do it depending on how I feel. If I feel like I need to put out something there to, uh, to show people or to, uh, to make people understand who Dinesh Karthik is, Maybe I'll do a few of that, but I'm not somebody who is uh, heavily into social media. I mean, uh, I'm not actually one of those regular social media users because um, a lot of the times I'm a pretty private person. Uh, you know, um, uh, I have a close group of friends. I stick to them. Uh, you know, when I'm in Chennai a lot, I don't even move out of the house. So uh, I'm a pretty private person, so to say. So social media isn't something that uh, fancies me a lot. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to put it... Uh, This time, uh, I've used social media as a medium uh, during these times to uh, put out a smile out there to make sure there is something light, something might people might see and, you know, laugh even for a couple of seconds. And then I feel that's enough for what I've tried to achieve. That's how I've used social media for now. So, no, I'm a pretty, um, I'm not a very uh, uh, intense person per se. So, you know, I have a, I do a lot of things in a very lighthearted manner. So that's what I'm trying to put out there. 
Right. We see that uh, quite a lot, I think, off the field as well. We are we understand that you're a very private person, but it's very nice, like you said, for your fans to be able to see you during these times through social media and keep themselves happy and, uh, you know, excited seeing the sort of stuff that you do. So thank you so much for that. Another question that I have for you is a lot of people, uh, you know, sort of understand and like certain questions that get repeated in interviews. What is this one question that you don't like being asked? <laughs> uh, well, I don't have any questions, but these days, obviously, when you, uh, you know, I've done a few interviews and whenever I've done the first thing, uh, you know, they tend to ask is what do you do during these times? Uh, you know, and the answer right. is pretty, uh, you know, pretty cliche, just like whatever else everybody else is doing. So, you know, I feel that that is a question uh, that can't like you can't put out a very funny or a witty answer. It's just a basic question. Right. And I feel like everybody knows what I'm doing right now. You know, it's just waking up, training, maybe eating food and then, you know, pretty much that. Okay, so we'll skip that one. I'm so glad I didn't ask you that question. Uh, feel a little safe at this point. Another question that actually was lit, uh, written into by one of our listeners is, tell us a little bit about Shah Rukh Khan as a boss and Preeti Zinta as a boss. Who is cooler? Um, Shah Rukh, as a boss, um, you know, he's the owner of our team, KKR, for which I play. Uh, yes. You know, he's been nothing short of awesome because... You know, the last couple of years, uh, you know, he's used to winning titles. He's won three titles. So last, the previous year, we were a semi-finalist. We were third place. Uh, the last year, we couldn't qualify. But even through those times, he was the same to me. Uh, and that values a lot to me because I always judge people as to how you treat people when you're not, when through your failures. And he's been the same to me. So, you know, that is something that is amazing. Uh, so, you know, I'm really proud and I'm happy. I don't think I could have had a better owner. Um, mm -hmm. Shahrukh, Juhi and Jay, uh, Juhi and Jay are husband and wife and, uh, yeah. you know, they've been awesome as well. So, uh, I'm really honored and privileged and, uh, I've been lucky actually more than anything to be, uh, to be part of this team and this uh, journey that uh, KKR has given me through these two years. And it's been nothing short of wonderful and fabulous. Preeti on the same side, we have, I was just there for a year and uh, she was, a, uh, she is somebody who is bubbly, like you could see on screen, uh, full of energy and, uh, she always wanted to do uh, you know, well, um, and, um, you know, the, the small time that I spent with her, I obviously have great memories with her. Very, very nice. Very well answered, I must say so, because I thought that would be like a trick question and you'd be very diplomatic and say, I'm not going to answer it. But thank you so much. I'm sure the fans will be excited to see that bit. Another question that was written in was, is there any unforgettable pep talk that you received in the locker room during a tough game that sort of changed your mindset and made it better? Yeah, before the 2013 final, uh, I remember we were playing CSK in the final. I was playing for Mumbai Indians then and uh, Ricky Ponting spoke to us before the start of the game, uh, before we headed out to the ground actually. And that was a fabulous uh, pep talk. That's probably one of the best pep talks I've been part of. And, um, you know, the energy that he brings to the table, the honesty, the integrity was just fabulous. And uh, in, my, in my cricket career so far, that's probably been the best few minutes that a person has spoken. Very, very nice. Thank you so much. I think uh, that sort of puts a lot of things into perspective for, uh, you know, people who are watching at this moment, because especially as cricketers, I'm sure there are several moments, especially on the uh, on the field and off the field, where you sort of feel like, oh my God, it's getting, you know, to me, it's getting a little stressful. So how does DK as a person in general handle that? How are you with, you know, the shortcomings and the highs of the game? I think, uh, you know, I take it in my stride. I think uh, I'm very aware that as many positives as there could be on a day, on a, on a, given, uh, on a given game, uh, I'm pretty aware that, uh, you know, the negatives uh, come through as well. They say you learn a lot more during failures and I've witnessed that. So, yes, I think, uh, you know, failure is an integral part of everybody's life. It's about how you, uh, you know, bounce back from those that makes you the person that you are. Awesome, awesome. The last question that was written in, this was specifically asked by a budding cricketer. So he has written in saying, you are a star when it comes to domestic cricket and you had an incredible journey before you made it into the Indian team. Any advice for budding cricketers, youngsters who are trying to make it in the field? Yeah, I think uh, one of the most important thing is, uh, you know, hard work. I think a lot of it is boils down to hard work, the amount of hours you put in in trying to become better at your skill. So, you know, start at that. Uh, as, as we previously discussed, I think failures and successes are going to be part of the journey. Uh, remember to embrace both uh, and never give up. I think at any stage of your life, you shouldn't give up uh, 
on your goal. I think uh, that's one of the main reasons why the great people have, you know, pushed that far, that further to achieve what they wanted. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm sure that would be like a very memorable pep talk to everybody who's watching now and who sort of wants to, you know, make it big in the field of cricket. Thank you so much. So those were your questions. Now we're going to move into a very fun, very lighthearted, would you rather? Okay. So this is a game where I give you a couple of options and you quickly off the bat have to tell me what you would do. All right. So the first question is, would you rather dance in public or sing in public? I'm bad at both, but given a chance, I'd sing probably. <laughs> okay. Would you create history or delete history? I'd create history, definitely. Okay. Would you rather... Okay, this. don't hit me for this question. It's just a very fun question. Please take it like that. Be in jail for 20 years. Oh no, be in jail for 10 years or coma for 20 years? Be in jail for 20 years. 10 years, I guess. 10 years, huh? Why is that? Do you have any sort of... I mean, I know I'm not supposed to ask for justifications, but just... No, but I guess, uh, you know, it's better to be conscious, you know, what's happening. Um, I'm sure, you know, um, whatever little movies I've seen, jail is a very interesting place. The, so, it's uh, the toughest survive. So, uh, it'll be a very interesting challenge just to get through those 10 years. Okay, very well answered. Would you rather be alone forever or surrounded by annoying people? Alone, alone forever, for sure. Okay, and you also said you're a little bit of a private person. You've got a very close group. So I think, yeah, I sort of guess that that would be your answer. Would you stalk an ex or stalk your crush? I know that you're married. I'm very sorry. I'm apologizing uh, to Deepika. Straight. It's okay. I mean, uh, these are hypothetical <laughs> questions. I can answer them. It's not that, uh, it's not that bad. Uh, I'd stalk a crush, I guess, because uh, it's, there's a lot of... Um, uh, positive energy that grows into, you know, stalking a crush. You know, you see things, you get happy for that moment. So it's good. <laughs> okay, boys, listen up. Do not stalk your folks. Uh, DK is saying it's more positive and more beneficial to be stalking your crush. So if anybody is watching in and wants some love tips, I think that's what you should be following. Okay, another one. Would you rather have three feet or three hands? Three hands, I guess. Three hands, you can do a lot more work. For sure, three hands. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And being a wicketkeeper, I think that, yeah, that's rightly answered. Be able to freeze time or travel in time. Travel in time. Travel in time. I think that's uh, far more interesting, for sure. Would you like to go to the future or would you like to go to the past? Future, future. See what future you, holds for me. But what if you were given an opportunity to go back, go back to the past and change something? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind going back to my past and changing uh, the way I reacted to a few things. But uh, there's not much I would change in terms of future. I'm some, I mean, in terms of my past, because I'm not somebody who looks deep uh, into what I've done and uh, how things have panned out. I just accept right. things as they are. So I definitely uh, move forward in the future and see what the future holds for me. Okay, fantastic. I don't know how much of a superhero fan you are, but anyway, I wanted to ask you this. Would you rather be Superman or Batman? Superman, probably because I want to fly. Ha, okay. Lose all your teeth or lose all your hair? Oh, wow. That's the toughest question so far. Lose all <laughs> my hair, I guess. Yeah, actually, yeah. We need to be able to eat. We need teeth for that. Hair, nobody cares. Bald is in, so that's absolutely okay. Would you rather vacation at the beach or the mountains? Mountains, mountains. Okay. Rather be able to breathe underwater or fly? I think I know the answer. Yeah, I mean, I guess fly, you know. Fly, okay. Water won't be so bad as well. Okay, we'll, we'll get you, we, we'll make you a superhero with sort of everything, you know, put together. Live without the internet or without AC and heating? Wow, without AC and heating. Mm. Live... Without the internet, uh, it's okay. I can deal with it. It's not that bad. It's without the internet. That's okay. Would you rather forget how to speak or forget how to read? Forget how to speak. I think I think you can say a lot more just being quiet. Really? Uh, definitely. Okay. I think maybe given the profession that I am, I would have probably said rather forget how to read because I don't have to read the things that people say about me. I can just listen and probably speak back. Maybe. Definitely. I think That's Okay. Would you have the ability, would you rather have the ability to read minds or change the thoughts in people's heads? 
change the thought in people's heads you can only do that if you can read a mind so yeah okay okay all right have the fastest car or the most luxurious ship in the world ha huh, luxurious ship i can <laughs> yeah definitely a luxurious ship i guess i've seen some photos of some yachts they're fabulous this everything it's like a five star hotel okay but i saw on your twitter that you like love cars and you're like this major you know you have this obsession with cars yeah no I, i'm i'm thinking of things that i can't afford i can at some point if i put my mind to it, maybe get a car but getting a yacht is out of my reach so yeah okay being very honest and reasonable with the hypothetical questions would you rather have unlimited access to international airline tickets or never pay for food at hotels international tickets i mean, I, I, i love traveling so yeah okay super be invisible or teleport to places be invisible okay the last question that i have for you is uh, a question but i know you also sort of answered this in the beginning itself would you rather cook or do dishes during this quarantine i have yeah do dishes for sure <laughs> <laughs> so that was your would you rather and i think you did fabulously well that was a really you know honest and quick response to most of the questions that i had asked you once again thank you so 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 much dinesh i cannot tell you how happy i am that you know you've been a part you've agreed to be a part of this initiative and uh, as i told you earlier this is for a cause this is to help that we you know ensure that we're raising funds for all of our covid-19 warriors so any thoughts that you would like to share at this point there was a lot of people um, out there uh, the workers uh, i think you rightly put it uh, i think the right word for them is warriors who are out there helping us so i think um, you know we should all be really thankful and grateful for those kind of people who are who are putting their lives at stake and uh, you know helping other people out there the least we can do is stay safe uh, you know do the things that the government has asked us like basic social distancing and you know using a mask if you're planning to go out and 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 the basic things wash your hands and all these kind of things and um, you know it's my it's my humble uh, request that people uh, you know st- uh, stay through this don't get too negative uh, i think i know it's very easy for me to say this too shall pass but uh, honestly we have to wait through and bide through these times and make sure we uh, you know we um, come come out of this as stronger people and make sure this world is a better place to live um, all my love and affection to everybody i think we all should stand in solidarity during these tough times and make sure uh, peace uh, is achieved post this wow a very beautiful message and i think what you said right it was very very nice to hear the word peace in your statement because i think that's something that will definitely make the world a better place and together as a human race we stand we are fighting this race and remember this too shall pass very rightly like mr dinesh karthik said once again a big 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 thank you from the entire team of hd media for your patience and for having agreed to be a part of this initiative so to everybody who is watching like i mentioned earlier Hundred hours, hundred stars is an initiative, a fundraising, uh, you know, initiative by HT Media, a tribute to the COVID-19 warriors. You will be now seeing a QR code at the bottom of the screen. You can scan that, click on it, and uh, enter in your details and donate generously in this fight. Make sure that you're doing whatever bit that you can. All of the funds go to the PMO Cares Relief Fund. So please, please, please do whatever you can. And once again, a big thanks to Dinesh Karthik for joining us. Thank you once again, very, very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys stay tuned to find out who is going to be our next big star, our next big celebrity on 100 Hours 100 Stars. Hi, this is RJ Genia from Fever Extra Char Film Kolkata. Oh my god, finally it is happening guys. 100 hours, 100 stars a non-stop tribute to covid warriors. I hope you all are enjoying 100 hours, 100 stars as much as we enjoyed interviewing the stars and superstars from all walks of life. Aaj jodi bhalo lage thake tale ek kore like karo, subscribe karo, comment karo and if you love it then do share. 100 hours, 100 stars guys, this is epic. Stay tuned. Love you guys.